Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and girls, welcome to the Tommy Talk. My name is Juan. This is my school partner, Anthony. This is a judo podcast for judo players by two judo players. So, Anthony, big question. How are you doing? Well, as you know, we were set to record this episode <laughs> six, three hours ago, and I like what, four hours ago, and I passed <laughs> out from the side effects of the vaccine shot. I'm still a little feverish, but um, I'm glad I just got it over with, so gonna yeah. probably go back to training in two weeks to be i'm yep. probably gonna go back so, to the club and everything so no no so so a good thing is that um me and anthony both we've got our vaccines i got the moderna vaccine i got my second shot a week ago and anthony got the you got the johnson and johnson you said yeah, today I got the johnson yesterday johnson. yep yesterday so anthony got the johnson and johnson one shot deal so he's feeling the effects of that today a little drowsiness a little soreness i know for me i was sore as if i went to a judo tournament i felt like yeah that's what i felt like <laughs> it feels like yeah you, like, you just want to sleep and your body's just sh shutting down <laughs> from the tiredness uh -huh. see i was a little bit tired i was a little tired but it felt like man my body feels like i just like went to a tournament like i had thrown a bunch just soreness yeah. and it's funny because my cousin was i was telling my cousin about it and she was like, oh, it's good for you. Okay, so it's only a soreness. That's all you got is like, I'm a guy that's in decent shape and I feel sore. <laughs> you don't work out at all. I'm a little worried. <laughs> well, I was, I was reading some studies and they said that actually the side effects were mostly occurring in younger people, young, healthy people. They weren't occurring in older people for some reason. Oh. Uh, other than okay, so I guess we're screwed then. Yeah. You're young, healthy people. <laughs> yeah, I I, I don't well, know. My fun. my ninety two, ninety three year old grandpa got it. I haven't heard anything about him getting side effects. So A tough old man. <laughs> it was funny because I remember the day I got it. My plan was I went in. I was going to get the shot, and the the uh, pharmacist is asking me, so what do you plan to do after you get the shot then? I was like, oh, I'm going to go to lunch and then I'm going to get my the gym equipment and go to judo practice. And she was judo. I was like, yeah. And like, that's a grappling style. Isn't it? I was like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a grappling judo player. She's like, ah, oh, you probably shouldn't do that today. You're going to be, it's going to make the side effects worse. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, if you're going to go do judo or anything, you should take some Tylenol, drink a lot of water and rest because it's going to kick your ass. And I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> then yeah, I went to I, judo. I told you guys, and you're like, "No, no, Juan, you shouldn't do it. No, you shouldn't do it." I slept like but that was hours. funny. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so is that all you want? You want to talk yeah, about the yeah, big yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. With this yeah, is talk about the big thing. You want to talk about it? Yeah. <laughs> all right. So everybody out there, if you can see what video number this is, this is episode 25. And if you know what that means. That means that this is our one year episode. One year anniversary. I wish I had some poppers. Oh, I should have bought some poppers today. Ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> yeah, I think for, my the, more. Ba -ba -ba. for the most part, we we didn't take what? a break at all. We we said we'd do it every, around it, twice a week. We recorded at least twice a week. Uh, every, sometimes we the said episodes every other got week, delayed. Not twice yeah. a week. <laughs> Sorry. Every yeah, other you, week. You see, I'm still kind of feverish. <laughs> every other week. <laughs> two times every uh, once a week every no every other week there we go <laughs> <laughs> every other yeah. week twice a month all right <laughs> yes every other week and twice we did a month. this for a year yeah and as you see how things changed a lot when we did the first episode mm -hmm. we actually filmed it and we actually filmed and did it at our judo dojo right when it closed pretty much like right after it closed mm -hmm. we went in week and weekend set up the stuff did what did you ever do with that video did you ever put it up or anything which video Oh, that video. Well, we the took first the first episode. episode we reviewed. No, I couldn't get the video. Yeah, working, the first remember? episode. I couldn't get it working. So it was just oh, audio. Get video work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I guess the first one, no lost, the lost archives, the lost video. So we lost that, I guess. And then since then, we've just been doing it this way uh, via Zoom. And yeah. I'm here at my place at my video set up. Anthony's at his house at his video set up. And we just do it this way, which is fun. You know, it's cool. It's not the but same, man. It's better, I think, we're face to face. It's not the same as we're face to face because then I can be like, grab Anthony. You know, in this position right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, even, even right now, like, you can kind of, I can kind of like see you lagging a little bit, just a little delay. And then one of the episodes, someone was like, I don't like how Juan talks over Anthony at all the time. And I was just like, well, yeah, I mean, it's because. There's a little delay on the internet, so we're bound to like talk over each other sometime, right? So, 
<laughs> that, that kind of stuff is uh, better in person. Uh, and <laughs> but this is not, I'm sorry. That, I'm sorry if I put in an Anthony sometimes. <laughs> no, this Sleep this right video there. this video was um this podcast was meant to be recorded in person at our either at our dojo or in my garage gym. Um but I d- it just didn't work out that way because of COVID. And we we decided to t- start this podcast um, many years ago, right? Like I don't year think it's like I, two years ago, two years. many, many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> like it was before we actually started it. But then uh, COVID, I guess, did get us, give us good reason to get us started because yeah. things were winding down a little bit. The dojo was getting popular. We we're getting a lot of adults signing up and also kids like we we're growing, growing pretty well. And um, yes, but with the, obviously we weren't the only ones who started a podcast. There's like <laughs> four or five other people starting the podcast. Then I think Travis Stevens was doing his own YouTube series and interviews mm-hmm. and like everyone was doing that kind of stuff. And then I think it just kind of waned off recently, like with things starting to reopen, like, Mm-hmm. Um, at the time I'm like, Hey, how, how are we going to compete with like Travis Stevens <laughs> or two time like judo Olympic medalist or, or some, someone or some BJJ guy out there, you know, like yeah, we can't yeah. really, we can't really compete with them. So I thought we can't just like go around interviewing all the big names, like how everyone does it. Right. So well, our, yeah, sorry. I, no, I'm like it, it, droning, no, no. So. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. I like, it's our own, it's how we thought about doing stuff. When we first did it, it was just going to be two guys talking about judo. And after, yeah. for a little while, people thought that we we're going to do a, all interviews. That we're going to be an interview podcast. It's like, no, we're not an interview podcast. It's becoming that way. Cause we've got a lot of people to talk with that want to talk yep. with us and have discussions. Mm-hmm. So it turned like that, but it was meant to just be you and me talking about judo stuff. And if I remember correctly, it was when you and me were driving to USA nationals from LA to Vegas. Mm-hmm. So that was about two, almost three years ago now, whichever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So two years ago, it was just you and me just riffing in the car, just talking about bullshit stuff, talking about judo, talking about grappling, MMA, MMA, judo. And we're like, you want to know what you're the ones brought up? Like you want to know one, we should do a judo podcast. <laughs> and I was like, all I right, think, let's try it out. <laughs> yeah. I, I think we'll make, make a good podcast. Cause we, there's a lot of stuff that we don't, agree with and that creates good mm. debates and conversations and also you're more competitive than i am and i'm more recreational so we have like different insights and thoughts and opinions on how judo can be or should be and or what judo means to us versus i think if you go out there and listen to a lot of other podcasts not that there are that there are that many judo podcasts out there but just in general a lot of them are like I'm interviewing this super competitive guy. We're going to talk about how he trains, what he eats. And you can't just compare yourself with them because they, they're doing that full time. I'm doing that. I have, I have a full time job. I have other hobbies. I've like, you, some people have families, have kids. Like he can't go to the gym six times a week, you know, or have like a nutritional coach. And like, well, you, you can't train hard six days a week. All right. You yeah. can't have a normal life and train hard. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, this guy, if, if you're an Olympic medalist, you have to have some natural talent already, right? Uh, athletic mm-hmm. ability. And yeah, I, I just don't think that type of, cause I listen to a lot of podcasts because we live like what hour and a half. I, I live like an hour and a half rush hour traffic to the dojo. So when I drive <laughs> back and forth to the dojo every other day, I'm basically listening to podcasts and all these podcasts, I'm like, you know, it's neat that they're interviewing these people, but it doesn't apply to me. I can't relate to it. So mm-hmm. that that was the goal of this podcast for me was to give an insight into how other people train judo or something that some some other people can relate to, like whether it's a 40 year old out there, dad, or some guy who's out of shape or just some hobbyists, like judo is not all about competition and medals. So what, yes, what, it is. how do it you feel? about competition and medals? <laughs> <laughs> No, like that's a like is what we talked about in the car. It's like you do it more of a hobby. I'm very competitive about anything that I get into. That's just how I am. So when I train, I want to train hard. I want to like one of my goals is always become a national champion. And even though I didn't become a national champion until I was uh, in the masters, you know, I always got high. I was it was funny. I used to always call myself a second place princess because I would always get like second place, third place, fourth place, and stuff. I'm like always runner up, never the winner and stuff. <laughs> you see, for me. 
I like to, I like to think about training smarter than training harder. I, I mean, that's the, I say that, but that can mean a lot of things. Right. But mm-hmm. medals at first meant a lot to me, but given how small the community is, and especially when I was in Texas in my weight class, mm-hmm. I would always get like second or third place out of like four people or out of three people. So I'm just like, what is, <laughs> what does this medal mean? You know? And, and then after a I'm while you're fighting the same people. <laughs> exactly. And after a while you're fighting the same person over and over again at every mm-hmm. tournament. So that that's the thing that kind of turned me off from competition competing, like waiting all day just to fight the same guy. I might, I might as well just go to his house and fight him three times, you know, like, hi, Mrs. Johnson is, can David come out to play? Like, like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can he come out to play? <laughs> Like, that's re- that's one of the reasons why I stopped going to small local tournaments. That's why I only compete at the big ones, like Winter Nationals, Summer Nationals, USA Nationals, Golden State Open. Um, mm-hmm. That's why I only do the bigger ones because it's it's even where the older you get, it's again like the same pe- like because the same judo yeah. dogs out there, it's the same guys that stuck with judo, it's the same yeah. black belts all the time. So if I yeah, go to a but- local tournament, it's like yeah, it's the same five guys all the time. Yeah, now that uh, that was before my injury, right? But now that mm-hmm. I not that now, but I've had my brown belt for a while. But since I got my brown belt, I was able to compete in the brown and black belt category. And that kind of just opened up new competitors to me. And there's a new challenge. Like maybe, maybe this is just my personal experience, but when I was fighting novices, a lot of them were what people would call like spazzing out, like, you know, Mm. like, wailing yeah. about brute forcing and all that kind of stuff. And, mm-hmm. and I just feel like it felt like a wrestling match in a sense. Right. But once I got, oh, yeah, yeah. once I was fighting in the Brown and black belt category, things were a lot more felt more like judo. You know what I mean? Like was, stuff that you see in IJF, like, yeah, I would say that's like, people are trying to do things like they're trying to do how to, I yeah. wish they're trying to do tattoos, trying to set up stuff which you see with some white belts and it's just like, like you said, it's brute strength and just yeah. jerking each other around and see who falls force, falls force, mm-hmm. falls first and who gets this force down to the mat, not using any technique. And those are the most dangerous guys. Like it's, mm-hmm. you never know what they're going to do. Yeah. Try to break your knee or something. Yeah. So I feel like novice, we were like always wrestling to the ground and then mm-hmm. getting these like ugly half-ass throws, which kind of relates to like the, the Lazari nowadays. Right. But yeah. Um, once I started fighting in the brown and black belt category, the really good people, I'm like in the air before I even realize what happened. And I'm on the floor. Like you, yeah. you don't even see it coming. So it's just a new kind of excitement, but uh, obviously I was injured. So my knee was never the same, but now that I got knee surgery, I'm excited to go back and start competing again. So. That's a good question. Now, when you do come back to competing, mm-hmm. are you going to start off at the lower like local tournaments or do you want to kick it up, like go to the Golden State Open or try a USA Nationals or Winter Nationals? You see, to me as a recreational person, they're all the same to me. It's about how many, it's about how many fights you get, right? And how far, mm-hmm. how far I'm going, how long I'm waiting, and how many fights I get. That's all I care about <laughs> as a recreational person. I don't care about uh, winning or losing. I, I just care mm-hmm. about my time, the money and how much basically what I'm getting out of it. So there's no, well, like, lucky. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm saying that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the, the point is just, I, I want to learn something. Right. So uh-huh. when you, sometimes you say big tournament, I'm just means to me, doesn't mean I'm necessarily getting more people to fight with for my category. It just means I'm waiting longer. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's uh, all relative. Well, well, if that doesn't matter to you, then you probably start off at lower tournament too. But for me, like I said, I go to bigger terms because it's more likely turn out for those tournaments. That's why for me, mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying. My age bracket, my my dawn level and stuff, black belts in their late thirties and stuff, more tend to go to bigger tournaments. I don't see a lot of those guys at the smaller Nanka winter tournament or Nanka spring tournament or mm-hmm. West Covina tournament. They've been always there. But the one good thing about us living in Southern California is that we got a big, a pretty big judo community out here. So there's a tournament almost every every month. There's at least mm-hmm. one tournament, sometimes two. So if you ever want to compete in Southern California, there's tons of tournaments out here. You see the my problem. My what I think is if you want to instead of going to a big tournament like mm-hmm. USA Nationals, which is like once a year, right? And yeah. then you have to 
last year, luck, la, was it last year? Two years ago. Luckily, it was at Las Vegas, so we were able to drive. Yeah. But that was still quite a trek. And then the following year, it got canceled, but it was supposed to be in Florida. Yeah. So that that's a far, super far trip to plan and costly. So I think for, for our good, four members, no, hold on. For our four members, America is very big. Okay. <laughs> America is fucking huge. <laughs> so I think personally, this is why I actually planned with Johnny and a bunch of the other guys is that we, we should mm-hmm. just do a road trip. Like instead of going to, Again, like we don't want to fight the same people locally over and over again. And instead of going to a large tournament once a year, why not travel to local tournaments a few times a year? Like maybe I'll road trip up to Northern California and find a find a tournament in California. Maybe I'll visit my family or friends out in Pennsylvania and go to the uh, what's it called Pacific Bell, something about mm-hmm. the Bell tournament out in Pennsylvania. Like yeah, and then uh, go to Florida and go to a local tournament. Go up to Seattle. My parent, my my parents, my sister lives up in Seattle. I'll visit her and find a local tournament there. I think mm-hmm. that's the recreational part, right? Versus we went to Vegas, we fought, had dinner, and then we like came back. <laughs> I did, we didn't even hit. You up fought, ate dinner, went back. Yeah, I fought. I went and gambled, then I fought again, I then gamble. I gambled some I more. <laughs> but a lot, of, a lot of people do that, right? So I think it's better to uh, make all these many, these many trips out of it. Go to the local tournaments, meet the grassroots uh, dojo owners, network, talk about how we can grow judo in America, mm-hmm. develop relationships, fight new people. Like just go to maybe there's a lot of these tournaments have seminars and clinics afterwards. Right. So mm-hmm. just like overall, I feel like that's a good thing to do. So no, I, think, I think that's a great idea. A fun little trip. It reminds me of the story of the guy that you told me when, um, when you guys were in Japan and you met a guy that was traveling the world, just going to judo, uh, judo dojos and things like that. Right. Was, was it? Uh, I can't remember. You might have to ask. Uh, was it Richard. You and Richard met a guy that was just traveling around the world to judo tournaments, I believe. Oh, right. Like this is the guy from Spain. Yeah. He does kata tournaments. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So he was, uh, he was from Spain and we went to the Kodokan together and he didn't join us in Rondori, but he was mm-hmm. there to take the kata class in, in the Kodokan. Mm-hmm. So he okay. was going around training all around the world. They looked like a bunch of hippies, like kind of like, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> long hair, tie dye judo gi. And <laughs> I don't, I don't, remember if we told the story in that episode, but we, we ran into them at the Kodokan international department, which, cause we showed up early and you have to sign paperwork and say what your Don rank is, pay the fees and like basically just do all the paperwork. And then mm. afterwards they're like, okay, you, you're done. Like show back up at the seventh floor on the, the, the randori stage at 7 p.m. or later, right? So we ran, we went five minutes down the block to go to the Kusakura Gi store. You know, the mm-hmm. Kusakura Gi, Gi is a lot of international yeah. competitors wear. We went to the store. Johnny was there for like ever. I'm just like, dude, they're <laughs> all the same. All the Gi's are the same. It's either white or it's blue. And <laughs> no, 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 no. You got double weave, single weave, competition Gi, uh, practice Gi. It's very different, very ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So he was like, sitting there literally have four geese laid out and there was like comparison. I can't decide which one to get. <laughs> and then I'm like, dude, Johnny, we're going to be late. And then, um, that's when we, we, so we, we signed up at the Kodokan for the tournament mm-hmm. and noticed them, those guys there. And then we saw them at the geese store. We started chatting with them because Richard sp- speaks Spanish. He started talking to him in Spanish, even though Richard's like Mexican Spanish and they were Spain Spanish. But uh, then that's when we learned they do kata and they were there to sign up for the kata class. And then we were talking with the guy downstairs waiting for Johnny because his friend was also up there. Can't decide between, <laughs> between what, what between he needs to get. White, I could choose. Yeah. And um, the space was so, the store was really small and tiny. And we had our like huge backpacks on because we, I, I had um, my gi and stuff in there. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so we just waited downstairs. So it was hot and in the middle of summer, like typhoon season. It was humid. Like, so yeah, interesting experience. But traveling uh, allows you to experience those things. Anyway, that's back to our one. That's going to be your next year. thing. You're going to travel the US. You're going to travel the US and stuff. <laughs> that's well, that's my goal. Well, it's funny because I do this similar thing. Well, I used to when I used to travel with my family more often. But whenever I go to the Bay Area, uh, I go visit mm-hmm. judo clubs up, up there. And when I go visit my family, it's in the central county of California near um, 
was it mm-hmm. Manteca and all that area. There's not many judo dojos out there. There's pretty much only two. There's one that's at the Saikido Dojo, or it was at the Saikido mm-hmm. Dojo. And there's one at um, Modesto Junior College. And those are the only two that I went to out there. But that's what I usually do when I go visit people. When I, go, I always try to find a judo club. But so that's our w- one year of the show and stuff. I want to thank all our special guests, everyone that came on the podcast, everyone that came to talk with us. We really appreciate it. We want to do more interviews with people. But I just want to tell people that we are not an interview show as much as we do a lot of interviews. <laughs> it was meant just to be us two, but just people just want to talk to us. That's how yeah. it is. You know, we're just cool like that. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. So uh, do you want to get into our main topic or you talk about anything else yeah. here? I mean, do you, do you have any other thoughts about feed, like feedback for me or feedback for you? Like stop talking over me, Juan. Like, <laughs> Hey, I'm, I don't try to do it. I swear to God, <laughs> I have a train of thought. I don't want to lose it real quick. <laughs> no, I, I think uh, it turned out really well. The podcast. Uh, I'm glad we did it. Um, I got a lot of positive feedback from friends and family. And I think, uh, even though we kind of target towards, um, like I said, we were targeting, I, w- I was targeting recreational players and maybe we need to, for the next, next year as a new, new year's resolution, kind of, <laughs> maybe we should um, explain stuff a little more and not assume people know what we're talking about because we're not like a competitive, serious thing. Well, so That is a great segue, Anthony, into our next topic <laughs> right now, because we're going to talk about what they call are the forbidden moves of judo. And these are questions that I actually get from a lot of white belts and even some advanced belts going, they hear that the forbidden moves of judo. I'm like, what's that? I was like, it's basically, it's the five main moves. Like there's give and take and stuff, but there's like five main moves that are not allowed in judo competition. And the reason why is because people have gotten hurt doing them. People gotten really badly injured or just dangerous moves. And, um, some of them you learn it during judo because they're still taught because they're still part of the curriculum and the curriculum blah, 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 blah. So it's still part of the teaching stuff. And there's some that you just, you'll never learn. Like mm-hmm. there's one we're going to go over that. I did not learn it until I went to my first coaching clinic. No, my first mm-hmm. reffing clinic. And even at the reffing clinic, they do not explain, they explain what it is, but I've seen it done so many different other ways. You, yeah, you won't believe. So, yeah. So, so like, to back up a little bit, mm. uh, forbidden techniques in the the judo syllabus is actually labeled under kinshi waza. Kinshi is forbidden techniques. Mm-hmm. I mean, these techniques itself are also categorized by different things. Like, for example, ashigarami, which we'll talk about, is a leg, leg entanglement that counts as a, a kansetsu waza, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, no katame waza, which is like a not kansetsu waza. Well, it's it, it's, it's part like, of the katame no kata, kat, kata. Kat, It's a katame waza, which is a hold down technique, and it's also a kansetsu waza, mm-hmm. which is a joint lock. Yes. So there's like these sub classifications. Um, but basically, to uh, echo what you said, like people just like most judo techniques, people teach them in different ways. Especially some of these are done in BJJ, so they're probably different from how judo does it, and because they're forbidden, nobody really teaches them anymore, right? And yeah, the forbidden. I know, I, said we, I, know <laughs> I know, I know, we said we weren't going to talk about leg grabs, but this is like my fear about leg grabs is that because nobody teaches them over time, people are going to have different interpretation is just teach it, but not actually do it and see teach the most effective or safe way to do certain things. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm afraid leg grabs is going to turn into. Is like now when you say doji me, I'll be like. Okay, how the hell do you do that? Like, it looks like a trunk lock, but yeah, no, it is a trunk that. lock. That is its literal name, the trunk lock. All right, so let's yeah. get into it. Let's just get into it. Okay, so which one do you okay. want to start off with? You pick the first one. Okay, so why why don't what if there's a four? We're gonna go over, right? Uh, well, four to five. Let's see which ones we go over. Let's see if we have the same okay. list. Okay, I'll I'll All pick right. the first one. Let's go, let's go All with right. the tr- since we're talking about trunk lock. Let's go with All right. trunk lock dojime. All right, so the first lock is dojime. Now, it is basically just a leg scissors to the body. The way I learned dojime and the way it's done most of the time is that if you're in guard position, I cross my legs and it's just, it's a closed guard. That's the best way to think of it. It is a closed guard position. And the thing is that if I either uh, push my legs into you, either pushing out or into depending which way I hold you, it is dangerous to the spine and to the rib area. 
It's actually illegal also in wrestling. This is why it's illegal in wrestling because it's bad for oh, the really? spine. Oh, really? I did not know that. Yes, it's actually illegal in wrestling. For the and spine? It, mm-hmm. How do you, how does that affect the spine? I thought it was just the ribs. It's supposed to um, compress the spines or somehow. That's the way I was taught when I was, thinking, when I was in like middle school when I first learned this move and it was like, you cannot do this in wrestling. You know, no a lot of freestyle is that it can uh, damage the spine. Uh, it's the same way as like if okay. someone puts you in um, a figure four body, body lock from the bottom position and they really yeah, put body their into you, body triangle. Yeah. It's the same thing. But that's doji me right there. And the most li- judo position is like from guard, you hold them and you just compress their spine and body and can't breathe. But it also is that it can be done more of the catch wrestling style or, or a pro wrestling <laughs> catch wrestling style or like a freestyle or folk mm-hmm. style where you do it from a side position. So as if your opponent's laying flat on their back or something or on their belly and you're like in a T mm-hmm. position with your legs crossing them and compressing onto their belly and spine. Okay. Do you have any opinions on doji me? So some people would consider this, I think, a, a low percentage move, like a desperation mm-hmm. move. Uh, yeah. So I don't, again, I don't know the technique. So I'm sure there's some intricacies about, about finishing the, 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 the strangle the technique right so mm-hmm. um do you are you familiar with any of that like w- whether like, you for learn example, a little a, bit a, a try let like for example when a lot of beginners mm-hmm. when they first start learning triangle from bottom from yeah. guard they are like why can't i finish it and then they miss things like you got to turn your hip so that your calf is like um across the cardioid artery in the back mm-hmm. and then if that doesn't work you got to pull the head down but not in judo that's a controversial topic in mm-hmm. judo but um but in BJJ, you would turn the pull the head down yes. and small things like that would help finish the choke. Mm-hmm. So is there something like that in dojime? It's funny because you actually do learn dojime a little bit in uh, katame no kata in the second. So people don't oh, know, okay. uh, katame no kata is the second kata set, the second form set that you're supposed to learn to get your second degree black belt in American judo, mm-hmm. at least in US, USA judo, USJF, USJA. You're supposed to learn that second kata to get your second degree black belt. And mm-hmm. uh, katame no kata is all newaza. It is all ground techniques. So nagi no kata, your first one for your black belt is all standing techniques. Katame no kata is all leg, it's all leg, it's all ground techniques. <laughs> now for dojimi for me, I find for me that it works the best when I do it to people is when I, um, so like say I have my legs crossed and you can see it's in a video, but in the audio version, you might not say, it. so I'm going to push my knees together and push my legs out. So I'm creating a vice inside when I'm doing that to somebody. And you're, um, you either cross the collar or you hold the collar just side to side and pull them in so they can't move away as you're compressing their spine and, and ribs and back and all that. So that's how like I learned how you dojime and how I first saw it done in judo. And you learn a little bit, you learn it in the kata, but it's not done that you're, um, in the kata, you're pulling them into you. And it's more about the choking. It's not about the body lock when you do it in the kata. It, is it in pro wrestling too? They call it like the scorpion rib crush or something like <laughs> Scor- that? Scorpion rib No, it's just called a body scissors. Okay, body scissors. Yeah, in pro wrestling, it's just I, body I scissors. I did remember, I did remember seeing it happen in an MMA match. I think it was UFC. It was a woman's MMA, ma- MMA match. Uh, yeah. Someone did I've it. I've seen it before. It's actually a very famous yeah. video of, um, I think it's Randy Couture's ex-wife actually got choked out by it one time because someone mm-hmm. did it to her on her throat and the ref didn't know what was going on and she passed oh, out. Crap. Oof. Yeah, so that's when he going against uh, the throat. Me of- that's a woman's legs. The garage show that's strong right there. So it reminds me of uh, those videos you see of the the woman with really thick thighs, like crushing watermelons with their thighs. Hey, like- we don't want nobody watching your path <laughs> in your own time, Anthony. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's it's a really not commonly seen, but I think it's one of those things that. Is bad for a good reason. Yeah. Right. So. All right. So doesn't have a, a doesn't have a crazy story. No, like I, I never, some really famous. Olympian. Yeah, I've never seen an Olympian or a famous old judo player. I've never heard of someone like <laughs> their spine got cracked when it was done to Dojime and they can never walk again. I've never, yeah. I've never heard of that, but I can assume that something like that happened. Cause that's what they explained to me in wrestling when I was a kid, like why this is an illegal move. Cause it's like, mm-hmm. there's certain things when you're a kid, you just like, Oh, I'm going to do this. I watched stone cold do this. So I'm going to try this now. You can't be <laughs> stuttering people in, in collegiate wrestling. <laughs> So uh, let's right. go to the next technique. Uh, the next technique I'm gonna, I think would be fun yep. to talk about a little bit pro wrestling right now is Dakeage. So 
Uh, Dakia. Uh, I was going to, that was, I was going to pick that you one. That one? <laughs> I was going to pro wrestling oh, one. <laughs> I was going to. So, Go so, okay. So Dakiage to most people is when they're always going to say this. Oh, you know that power bomb technique? Oh, I just power bomb that guy. I just power bomb. So for most of the time, it's when, when people pull guard onto you and you just slam them to the mat, you grab their collar. You lift them. Uh, yep. You lift yeah. them up above the waist and just bam yeah <laughs> it's it most of the time nowadays it would happen someone to jump guard to you but it's actually supposed to be from when you're mm-hmm. in newaza and you're in the guard on the ground you get to your knees or get your legs you squat them up and slam them down that is traditional dakiage and you can yeah. really mess a person up because you can just just give them a spine buster you know just i'm kind of like pro wrestling terms to, to describe this stuff <laughs> one of the one of the first BJJ matches I've ever watched, this is before I knew much about grappling. Mm-hmm. I saw a guy like jump guard, mm-hmm. basically jump guard. I'm like, why is he holding on? To, and I was thinking, why is he holding on to him and not just like slam, S- him, slam him down? Straight down? And yeah, I've seen MMA knockouts oh, yeah. like that, yeah. like on in MMA matches. So. There's actually a... And the MMA, the MMA mat floor is soft it's, too. So yeah. it's like, if you, if someone do that, if someone did that on a hard floor and you did that, <laughs> yeah, you, like they're, they're Dakiyage ghosts. and knock them out. <laughs> but uh, that's traditional Dakiyage is usually from the guard position, but it is also considered Dakiyage. Yeah. If someone has me in an arm bar, if someone has me in an arm bar, I get to my legs, I stand up, I pick them up and slam them down. That's Dakiyage mm-hmm. as well. And the other way, the last way to do it in, in judo terms, is if someone has me in Sankaku, uh, that's a triangle choke, I grab them by their belt, pick them up, slam them down onto the mat. That's dakiyage. And all those, all those ways are just illegal in judo. But the way judo kind of kept dakiyage, but without actually doing dakiyage, <laughs> was that now if I'm in guard position and I pick the guy up, it's considered a dangerous position and it's a mate. If I just lift him up like an inch, two inches, if I got him off the mat, yep. they do not want me slamming him on his head from a guard position, an armbar position, a sankaku position. They don't want me slamming him on the mat, mm-hmm. concussing him, spinal injuries, breaking someone's neck. Yep. So in a judo match, some people might not know this. Actually, there's some uh, some brown belts I was teaching one time that didn't know this, that if you pick someone up, is immediately mate. And you can do it at competition yep. or at the it, dojo. Mm-hmm. That's why I think I was reading on Reddit and some people, someone posted something about uh, some technique being shown or demonstrated. And they're like, can't you just get triangle from the bottom? Like, it's so stupid. And I'm just thinking like triangle, ha- how often do you see triangles happening from bottom in judo? Yeah, it's right? tough. It's very, really, really yeah. rare. Because first of all, you, you don't want to be on your back in the first place. Second of all, once, even if you get into the triangle position or the high guard position, all they have to do, like you said, lift mm-hmm. you up and then it's Mate. Yeah. You gotta let go. So it's a low percentage yeah. move. But it's um, the thing that, again, senseis don't teach, their, don't teach their students this move so they don't know that. There was even one time I, mm-hmm. I know I taught this to somebody at judo. I don't know who it is, but I taught them this at mm-hmm. judo and then it happened at a tournament a few months later and I told them this, pick him up, just pick him up. And he looked at me like, I don't know what you're talking about. Pick him up. I don't know what that means. And say, oh, what are you talking about? And I was like, ah, no. And then he got, t- then he got Sankaku and I was like, ah, shit, damn it. <laughs> so I, I actually read somewhere that back in the day when they first banned the technique, well, they didn't ban it, but they made it so instead of straight up mm-hmm. banning it, they made it so if you lift to someone above the waist, it's mate. Uh, it's ipon. Oh, okay. It's automatically ipon. Because it shows that if you they get them up that high, you're going to slam them down. Yeah. It's ipon. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you can you slam them on their down. back. It's yeah. ipon. It's a dangerous move, though. You knock guys yeah, out. But, but, if you, but if you slam the if you slam the guy, then you lose. Then oh, that's a game. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, but all you have to do is lift them up. And I think I think that's a good rule. I don't know why I didn't keep that. Yeah, because right? it's very if hard. You, if you decide to, to no, it's, it's very hard to. Well, if you decide to, we're going to talk yeah. over each other again. Okay, I, I go. It's very hard to keep balance when you have somebody in an armbar position or even in guard position. You're trying to lift yep. them up, and they're fighting and squirming out of it. You may lose your step. You may lose your footing and step, and just like yep. just slam them down anyways. Uh-huh. Just like or the, or they might transition. They might transition to something else mm-hmm. midair, like like the like DJ. Yeah, like DJ. <laughs> oh, DJ, don't bring up DJ, man. Oh. My heart goes out to that man. <laughs> he lost. Pride never die, baby. Yeah. Pride never die. Pride rules for but, life. <laughs> but I think that's a good rule. Makes uh, judo a lot more dynamic and a lot more possibilities mm-hmm. and transitions happening. So uh, I like that rule. Um, 
and then now people are like, I'm just going to pull guard when I'm going to slam like, you then. Slam. <laughs> so well, it's also, I've had yeah. BJJ guys um, do that to me. Like when I go over the BJJ dojos mm-hmm. that they pull guard on me and I'll pick them up and then they'll be, and I'll be like, I'll be like, Oh, do I want to? Oh, I can't. Oh, I know I'll get in trouble if I do it. <laughs> Takiyake, hit him. <laughs> So one other thing I just remembered as we were talking about this, uh, back in 2017, the Kodokan removed Dakiyage from their officially recognized technique. Really? Like it's not an official hmm. Kodokan recognized judo technique. I didn't know that. Yeah, because they they added, they, I don't remember every single thing that they added and removed, but I did know they they started recognizing Kouchi Makikomi as his own thing. Because before 2017, Kouchi Makikomi was just, Okay, this again. Ko Uchi was his inner leg trip, yeah. right? But Ko Uchi Makikomi is inner like wraparound. Mm-hmm. So that's when you when you, you see in a tournament, it's when they hook their leg from the inside and then they wrap their hand around the other guy's arm and drive them forward onto the floor. So that's the best I that's the best I can explain it to those who don't are not familiar with what it is. Um so that used to be classified as Koichigari. Mm-hmm. So now the Kodokan, well, not now, 2017, they recognized that as a technique. Mm-hmm. And then um, Uda, I think it was Uda Katame, mm-hmm. which is the, the one where you, you hold the guy, one, one hand you're holding on the guy's uh, leg and the other one on the, the front and you, your, back's like, your back's on top mm-hmm. of them, mm-hmm. holding them as a pin. That didn't used to be recognized as a pin. Now it's recognized as a pin. And I think it's an official technique now. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think... Well, it's not a great pin. Also, another thing that they... It's not a great pin, but it's a pin. Uh, you start seeing an IJF. Now, now that they start recognizing it, I've seen it more often. So it's not terrible. Um, also, uh, Neon Belly, Uki Katami, floating hold. Like, Neon Belly is considered a technique now. So, but I think they wanted to keep, like, the total list of techniques, like... <laughs> At a hundred, yeah. like the, the sweet the hundred number, mm-hmm. flat um even a hundred number. So then they had to remove some techniques. So they remo- removed dakiyage. Yeah. Well, it's funny because we have that a lot in so. judo where there's certain techniques that we do that don't really have a name. They have a name, but it's not sexual. Like how, if I yeah. say okay in America, I say kimura for one position, americana for another position, you know, or key lock. In mm-hmm. judo, I just say um, udegatame. Whether it's up or down, it's Uda Katame. So some people might get confused mm-hmm. that way that we, oh, we don't have a top name for it. We don't have a bottom name for it. It's just one name for it. Broken arm bar. Right? It means broken yeah. arm bar. U- Ude Katame? Yeah. No, Ude Katame is just arm, uh, arm hold, arm, and arm, arm entanglement or something, arm like whatever. Hold. Yeah. But it's like how we only have the no, arm, arm hold. All right. Ooh. Yeah. yeah it's just, it's one name for both positions. And so some people get confused about that, you know? So it's interesting. They're adding some moves. All right, so that was Dakiyage. What's the next one for you? Mm-hmm. Uh, are we going to go over the leg grabs one too? So do you mean go through... Um, let's do the leg grabs separately. No, 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 I'll, I, I, yeah, okay. Because I, 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 I had something else to add to that topic about removing uh, about the technique classification, but we're going to go about leg grabs and we can wait. Um, I guess uh, Connie Basami, since we were just talking about- Everyone knows Connie Basami we talked about last episode, (laughs) leg scissors, you know, you know why it's bad. Yeah, don't It's a leg breaker, all right? That's just what it is, all right? It's not done correctly. No one wants to make, everyone wants to make it look look the cool way, like it's fucking John Wick film or something, leg scissors, guy flip mower, no. You want to do it safely, you do it on one hand. That is just how it is. You do one handed and you go backwards, all right? No sideways, no no no-handed versions, just you're going to break the person's knee. Mm -hmm. All right, so the next one would be, let's see which one I want to go through. Let's go, okay. Let's go to... Um, Do you want to talk about Kawazu That's actually what I was going to go to next, yeah. Now, yeah. Kawazu Kake, I never learned that technique legitimately. I only learned it, what it was mm-hmm. exactly, until I went to a coaching clinic, not coaching, no. I went to a refing clinic. When I got my shodan mm-hmm. in, um, in judo, you had to get a coaching certification. And one of the techniques they talked about was this one. And they never really taught exactly what the throw is. It's just, you do not, uh, you are not allowed to lace your leg inside the other person's leg with your toe. And what I mean by that is, so no, go ahead, go ahead. Is that what they said? Is that what they said? Yeah, it was like, okay, so say, and they demonstrated from a Kochigati position. Mm-hmm. So if you come in for a Kochigati, you're supposed to lake, you're supposed to kick the leg away because they're sweeping it, or you hook with the heel. 
You know, some people like to hook with the heel as they push the leg away. Those are legal techniques. But if I lace my leg inside and I wrap all the way around, so my toe is pretty much on the front of your shin bone at this point, mm -hmm. that, that makes it illegal. That makes it um, uh, Kawazu Gake. I can never remember that name. So that, so I did, I did some studying on this topic mm -hmm. uh, last year. Actually, was, I think it was last year. I looked up some mm -hmm. books and looked up the IJF rules because my understanding was the same as yours before mm -hmm. that was that if you can't, you can't grapevine, we, we call it grapevining, but then other martial arts grapevining just means wrapping mm -hmm. around. But you, like you said, you can't wrap it all the way around and have your toe hook around. And we actually see a lot of kids in our kids class yeah. do it by natural mm -hmm. instinct. And we stopped them doing it because it is dangerous. Uh, you're, you're basically um, locking out the knee, yeah. right? So uh, it's dangerous to the knee, but I also started, the reason why I started looking up the, the rule itself and the, the, the research behind it is because I saw people doing it in IJF and no shields were called. Okay. I saw it, I saw it happen very often. Uh -huh. And um, so I looked it up and I asked people on Reddit and if someone linked me to the rules, updated, I haven't opened it right here because I say, because I know this will come back up in the future. I take notes of things that I know I'll forget. Mm -hmm. um, updated 13th January, 2020. And it shows pictures of the leg entanglement position okay. of exactly what we're talking about, where you wrap the leg all the way around mm -hmm. and it says the act of entangling the leg without making an immediate attack must be penalized with Shido. Without immediate attack. So you can't hold the leg there. So, because it's seen as a defensive position because it's preventing the other person from using, doing hip throws on you and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, good. So that's, that, yeah. That's where I learned it, it from actually was from wrestling in high school. If someone tries to suplex you or Udanaga yep. in judo, mm -hmm. do this to the outside of the leg on a person and they can't suplex you. That's how you defend a suplex in wrestling. Yep. So, we teach that on defending a hip throw too, mm -hmm. like uh, Udanaga and stuff. You, put you hook your leg in but not to, to the extent that we're talking about where imagine you're doing a ochigari and you just wrap your leg all around yeah. right so it seems like if you wrap your leg all around and with the toe hooked in and you attack with the ochigari it's actually legal according to the interpretation of these rules mm -hmm. and i read through all the rules it doesn't specifically say this attack is legal and this was the only <laughs> reference to that position that i found yeah. was that if you get in this position and you don't attack right away mm -hmm you get a Shido. All right. So it's implying that it's legal to do this. So then that led me to question, what is, what is Kawazugake then, uh -huh. right? All right. <laughs> so, it, so it seems like Kawazugake uh -huh. is just, if you get in that position and you throw them backwards. Mm -hmm. Okay, that brings to the other. So if you're next to them and you throw them backwards, yeah. Yeah, so, okay. So explain to people why it's dangerous is that, so when you're doing this technique, so if my, my legs wrapped around you, and remember in judo, we're going for that ippon. I don't want to go in the ippon, so I'm gonna be fighting to stand up the entire time. Now, if my legs wrapped up so it's straight and it can't move, it can't bend, and he's putting all his weight on me and my weight's on top of it, and we're hopping around, my knee can break. I'm gonna bust open my knee, tear it, ACL, PCL, MCL, whatever, whatever ACLs I have in my knee are gonna be destroyed. That's why it's dangerous. And you might not think about it, but think about having your legs straight and wrapped around something and then hopping on that and think about that. Mm -hmm. It's scary. You think about that. Now, yeah. the other way I've seen it is the way you're talking about right there is that I have seen in other ways is um, the only way I can describe it again. I got such a pro wrestling mark is what we call in pro wrestling, a side <laughs> Russian leg sweep. So imagine if I'm side to side to the guy and his left leg is uh, right next to my right leg and I wrap my right leg inside his leg right here. And instead of going sideways throwing, I'm just going straight back with him. And um, mm -hmm. it was a, it's a trip in pro in pro in pro wrestling. It's called side rushing leg sweep and stuff. But in wrestling, I can't remember. It was just called, we do it in wrestling also because you're supposed to turn the guy back really fast. Mm -hmm. But it's that, it's that technique right there where you can really mess up a guy's knee, I feel, because you're putting all that yep. weight on the leg. So uh, the, when I was doing research on this technique the, on YouTube, you can actually find a video of it. The most common way I've seen people do this is that they go in for um, uh, a Ken, Ken Ken Uchimata, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. um, Uchimata's inner thigh throw. So Ken Ken is when you do the, the bouncing. So you kind of attack the, the outside leg versus more traditional hip-based Uchimata. You attack the, the, the inside leg on the far side and you, and you would go in deeper. But this one, you go in on the outside, sweep up but not commit all the way and then 
turn into that hook we're talking about. And mm-hmm. then instead of going for instead of bending down to finish Uchimaki, you throw them backwards yeah. and all your weight goes on them and you just sweep that hook, hooked leg up and hopefully don't break their knees. Yeah. So. It's just like I said, so like, so you go in for Uchimata and you finish a side leg and ro- side Russian leg yeah. sweep. Yeah. And can you imagine if you mess up and you didn't put all your weight on that knee and your opponent's weight on that knee? It just, I, it just scares me to think about that, but that shit can happen. Yeah. And I can totally see it happening. That's why technically is an illegal throw in judo at a yeah. tournament or even at your home dojo, they should be stopping you if you, if you do it to somebody. But as Anthony said right now, mm-hmm. watch some IGF tournaments and they're letting it slide. So it's one of those things where it's illegal, but that's something I always say about judo. Ippon wins. Ippon, or if you do an illegal technique and it becomes Ippon, you're going to get away with it. And that's one thing I hate. That's one thing I really hate about competition judo sometimes. Also, one of the recent UFC fights, uh, one, one of the, the famous people now that trains with Khabib, uh, Islam uh, Makhachev. Mm-hmm. Uh, he fights in the, what is this? What weight class? Is was he this? 170? The lightweight, the lightweight oh, division. So okay. he's fighting in the same, yeah. So he fights in the lightweight division. His last fight was on March 6th on UFC 259. He fought Drew Dober. Mm-hmm. He did, he did, he ran like a takedown clinic there. Everyone <laughs> should go watch that. Um, and he, he did Kawazugake mm-hmm. there one time, if I remember correctly. So, uh, yeah, it's effective. Yeah. Um, I also want to say that like a lot of these techniques, it, to me, they look a lot safer um, when done with no gi. But when you add a gi to it, everything just like so sticky. People grab onto things they couldn't grab onto normally, mm-hmm. and a lot more body weights hanging in weird areas, and that complicates things. So, yeah. well, to me, it's also it's just so. No, go continue. Go ahead. No, no, you go. You go, Anthony. I concur with you. Yeah, I, I mean, I I'm not. I'm not an expert about that, but it seems like. Just because you see something in MMA doesn't mean it's safe in mm-hmm. judo, you know? So That's the thing I always say. In judo, we're all fighting to stand up. We're fighting to stand up as much as we can because you know if we go to our back or if we fall down, that's the end of our match. So that just makes things 10 times more, more dangerous. All right. So the last one we're going to go through would be uh, Ashigurami. And Ashigurami is pretty much just um, leg locks in judo. So this, I guess, this is not another thing I'm not an expert in. So I've, I'm kind of like hesitant and sounding like an expert. But when I hear John Danaher from BJJ talk about it, mm-hmm. he just seems to talk about all like locks as Ashigurami, it, like uh, and any any sort of like fifty fifty position. I don't, you know, what I'm talking mm-hmm. about like uh, any sort of fifty fifty position, and then trying to do a, a ankle lock or a toe hold or anything like that, or a heel hook. Those are all classified under Ashigurami to them. Just like that whole classification of techniques. But when I do research on judo Ashigurami, it seems like it specifically refers to pulling guard and doing a knee reap, mm-hmm. what, what BJJ calls reaping the knee. So it seems like it specifically talks about that. Now, if someone knows about Ashigurami and judo more than I do, please correct me and hmm. send us an email or something, but, or give us more resources to look at. But that's my understanding is that you pull guard and then you wrap your leg over their leg and reap the knee. Yeah. So it's a leg entanglement there, a leg it's, lock. It's pretty much like a knee bar. The way that it's the most simplest way to look at it as, mm-hmm. is as a knee bar. But it is one of those things where in judo, where we have one name for many positions that confuses people because that's been the same way. Like I've always known Ashigurami as just leg locks and that's just totally. So whether it's a heel hook, Achilles tendon lock, knee bar, it's all Ashigurami for the most part. The only time that it's actually given a different name in my opinion that I've noticed is that when you're doing Katame no, not Kata, um, yeah, Katame no Kata, when you're doing this, when you're doing these things that they actually refer to the one that you're talking about, the leg sweeping one as um, he's a Katame. And even with even with he's a got them in, I've seen it demonstrated and shown different ways. Where when I learned it, it was more like kind of like just a knee bar, like a very simple knee bar. Mm-hmm. But I've also seen people demonstrate it as a heel hook, and I'm like, oh, it kind of makes sense because I'm gonna wrap my leg here. I thought hit, wrap I thought he's a katame. I thought he's a katame was kind of like a waki katame, but with your knee. Is it, or I might be getting confused. Am I? 
I, I don't, I never did the Gatame no Kachi. Oh, no, no, it is. No, no, it is. Yeah. It is. I'm getting confused right there because my roads are written down together. That's what it was because I was considered, mm-hmm. even though you're doing a walkie to gym with your knee, it was still considered a, a leg lock because your legs weren't putting pressure on it. Mm-hmm. If I remember correctly, God, it's been so long since I've done that Kata clinic. <laughs> <laughs> But oh man, it's been so long. But yeah, that's that's what it was. They were both considered leg lock positions. But even though with the walkie Jima, you're doing it to the arm, but your knee is the one that's doing the lock, so that's yep. what was considered leg lock. But uh, yeah, but back to the um, Ashigurame, I've seen it done as just a knee bar position mm-hmm. to bring the person down, and then I've seen people do it from a heel hook position, bringing the person down. And as an Achilles tendon lock, where you get your leg, under, where you get your wrapped, uh, your mm-hmm. arm underneath there, and you get that little bone right here, pushing it up. People in the video can see this. <laughs> and you're pushing leg up. You probably will know what Achilles tendon lock is, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> and you're bringing them down. I've seen it demonstrated both ways, all three ways before, and they're all referred to as the same name. So it's just one of those things where like with Udagatame, whether it's up or down, it's Udagatame. So whether it's a leg lock in one, one of the three major positions is still by the same name. And again, that is illegal in judo competition just because they found that way, way, way back in the day, it was just too dangerous to do. I've heard the, knees, a, the way the leg and knees. Yeah. I heard one of the stories can't like one of the stories that's been told is that um, they had a judo tournament or she I match in front of the emperor and someone like broke their leg in front of them and they banned it after that because like having someone hurt like that in front of the emperor is a bad omen or something but um also <laughs> okay. back then they, did, they didn't have knee surgery so if you're if you fuck your <laughs> knee up you're you're like crippled for life so um you put some herbs on it you know you get some <laughs> of those needles put inside there you're good you make a wooden brace at it for your knee <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you break your elbow, but, you can pop it back in place and put a cast and then you'll be good, right? But Yeah, why not? The same there. for your knee, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's how <laughs> it works. But uh, the reason knee locks, but that's the reason why is because the way the knee's built, it's like the way the leg is built, you be like, I'm fine, I'm good, I'm not hurt, he's fine, I'm not going to tap, not going to pop until boom, it snaps. Yep. It's not a thing where like the arm or somewhere else is like, okay, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. I'm going to go now. Yeah, by the, the, by the time it hurts, it's already too late for heel hooks. For yeah, example. it's already done. It's just like, I call it like the elephant reflex. It's like, it goes all the way down my feet. I don't feel nothing. Then it's still your legs hanging off. Your fuck is hanging off you and shit. Yeah, that's what scares me the most about BJJ um, techniques is the, the leg locks is that I feel mm-hmm. like I don't know when to tap. So I'm, I'm like scared to roll with people that do leg locks on me. Um, luckily I'm not, fast. <laughs> I, luckily I'm not high belt ranked enough yet, but I do want to learn more about, um, like locks. That's my new year's mm-hmm. resolution goal this year is to learn more about like locks. Um, learn more about Kata. I want to do some Kata specifically judo Kata. Mm-hmm. I might have to drive up to San Francisco for that, but, uh, unless you know about it, then uh, you can teach me. So actually, I've learned it, but it was, I'm not good at it. I, I could not like, I could not teach it to nobody. I could teach Nagi no Kata. I mean, I, I could teach, uh, yeah, Nagi no Kata. I can teach uh, Kimi no Kata probably, but anything else higher than that, I'm, I'm not good at it at all. Like, yeah, you got to go to clinic for that one. My, uh, my understanding you go together. You... Why not? Let's go together. I'll no, go with you. Yeah. Why road not? trip. Road yeah. trip. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my understanding of Shino Kata before this, uh, before recently was, um, that, I think for the sixth don, right? In the USJ in USJF, to get your sixth don, you have to do Juno Kata, your sixth degree mm-hmm. black belt. Um, but when I started doing research on it, because someone on Facebook uploaded a f- clip of someone doing the the Juno Kata and this clip of Jirgo, uh, Jigoro Kano holding up Mifuni, uh, Mifune, um, in mm-hmm. this uh, Uranagi position. But as you know, the Juno Kata has no throws. There's no throws in it. Yeah, yeah. And it just looks, to an untrained person, it looks like ridiculous, right? So this BJJ, <laughs> this BJJ like gr- uh, group was like, what is this technique? And obviously you have all these like snarky comments making disrespectful comments to them. And most of them probably don't yeah, know they what don't know it is. They, they don't know what it is. They don't know the purpose of it. They don't know that's Jigoro mm-hmm. Kano, but um, 
after I did some research, he was like, Jigoro Kano invented this kata when the amount of students he got grew too large for him to go correct, like correct the students individually. He just couldn't go around correcting everyone. So he made this kata to demonstrate Kazushi and off balancing and um, the way of yielding, yeah. like the, the Jew part of judo, right? So mm-hmm. it makes sense to not have throws in the beginner when you're demonstrating like these things to them. But um, when I've been watching it, mm-hmm. then it has all these turns and how to use leverage properly, how to sidestep it's away from someone charging at you. Leverage and balance. That's the two main things when I did it that you're supposed to learn from it. Leverage and balance and keeping your balance and holding up the other person. Yeah. So it makes me question, why is this reserved for like a high... Don rank <laughs> promotion why are, and not taught to beginners. <laughs> <laughs> why do we only do kata in our black belt? Like technically, shouldn't we be like karate and taekwondo and all the other ones where you're like, as a white belt, you're learning kata as just the beginning? Shouldn't it be like that? Why does it have to learn the like I under, I kind of get understand why um uh Kimi no kata and Juno Kata are for black belt. I get it because mm-hmm. it demonstrates that you understand the basic throws of judo. It demonstrates you understand the basic newaza of judo. I get that. But like you're saying for this other one, for Juno Kata, like, yeah, for teaching balance and stuff and, and balance and strength and restraint while you're doing these things. Yeah. Shouldn't you learn that as a white belt? That's the weird thing yeah, about I, judo. You know? I, I'm, Why saying, it, I'm not saying you don't have to go ahead. Finish your, your thoughts. Sorry. No, I was going to say like, there's a lot of crazy things in Kata with judo. <laughs> Like people don't know, but judo has punches and kicks, but you don't learn mm-hmm. that till you get to your fifth dawn. You know, okay. Yeah. We also have demonstra- We also have techniques in our katas against guns. All right. Yep. You're one of the few martial arts that have a literal kata designed against guns, short knives and samurai swords. All right. Katanas. When I first saw the, the wooden guns and kata, I'm like some, some guy from like the 90s probably <laughs> added that shit in there. Like on a drunken night. I thought, a I drunken like, no, night. Ju- judo is actually not that old now that I think about it. So yeah. And doing the kata is like, you look funny cause your hands are up. Like I look like a scarecrow when I'm doing this and I duck underneath. <laughs> it's, like, it's funny cause I'm here and I duck underneath the knife, grab it with my hands. So it's kind of like a standing Kimura position right here. And then I push them back down as if I'm taking um, um, with the Kimura position down to the ground and disarming him with the knife or gun with the gun. Yes. The gun, the gun wants that one. <laughs> but yeah, like going back to what I said, like this should be, I'm not saying they should do the whole thing. Like to get a yellow belt, you have to know the full Juno Kata. I don't think so, but they can totally <laughs> divide it up. Cause I think in some countries, even for the Nage no Kata, which is the throwing Kata for your Shoshodan, a lot of countries divide it up into your Sankyu, Niku, Iku, Shodan. Um, so mm-hmm. you do the first section, this one, second section of this rank. So why can't they do that for the Juno Kata? Right. So they should. Uh, well, yeah, because they do all that. Cause by your first three cues, by get to your dawn, you're detrained for your first dawn. You should know all five by there. At least you know, the first three learn two more. And now you're done with your Juno, uh, your, uh, Nagi no Kata. So, yeah, but that's why I think that's I think that. severely underrated and should be brought back. Mm-hmm. Not so those hard. are the major techniques let's go back to our main thing so those are the major techniques that are banned in judo the forbidden techniques in judo and there are things that you actually should learn uh by your sensei but a lot of people don't teach it because it doesn't come up in competition or they're illegal anyway so you shouldn't learn them and do them anyways mm-hmm. um do you have anything to add about those techniques anthony I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you can't do that you can get away with it in judo too. <laughs> are, are we going to talk about leg grabs? The thing that I'm sick about talking about. Do you want to give about. a little brief history about that? What it is? The the leg grabs. You, you, go ahead. You, you, you seem to love talking. All right. Talking all right about I'm going to go through. <laughs> I don't love. I just like explain people why we don't do leg grabs because it's a big thing. Uh, okay. So in judo, we do have leg grab techniques, okay? We have a double leg technique. We have a single leg technique. We have the ankle pick technique. We have it in judo. It's just, it's not taught anymore a whole lot because you got taken out from IGF. The IGF took it out because, um, what was the last time they had the, in the Olympics? Was around I don't think they actually, I don't think they actually came out and said that's the exact reason, but we're pretty sure this is the reason, yeah. so... 
Yeah, it was just that judo was starting to get a little bit sloppy again. Like there, we go through like ebbs and flows. We mm-hmm. have beautiful judo sometimes. We have ugly judo sometimes. And we're getting toward that point where we're having ugly judo again. And the problem was that a lot of people were losing matches. And what they would do is shoot him for a double. They would shoot him for a double to try to get an Ippo and Orwazadi from it. Or just try to get a bunch of Yukos with bad takedowns. And the description that people always give is like, oh, look at those judo guys. They just look like wrestlers in pajamas. And I hate that. I really hate that saying, wrestlers in pajamas. I hate that saying so much. You say that around me, you're going to get thrown. <laughs> Watch those that say it to me now. <laughs> so uh, 2008, the Beijing Olympics was the last time leg grabs were fully allowed. From that point to when London happened in 2012, the rules changed to where you're allowed to still grab the legs, but it had to be a secondary technique or a reversal. So say someone came in on a technique on you, then you can grab your leg, take him down. Or like say you came for, counter, for, right? for, yeah, like Uchimata counter stuff. Or say you came in for um, Sodasuni Konegoshi, you get him in the mm-hmm. air and you can do the whole arm sweep thing to sweep them over uh, to get them over, over the top, that beautiful technique, which I miss a lot. That thing's gorgeous. So they're like, ah, there's still a little bit too much leg grabbing, too much stalling. Let's just take out leg grab techniques fully. So by the time it was, was the 2016, 2016 for the Rio Olympics, leg grabs were just fully banned. And even from 12 to 16, there was things about like, oh, it's a sheet. It's going to be a sheet of the first one. Oh, it's, we're going to be harsh on you guys and be a first one to mock you no matter what. It was, it was two shitos and two leg grab shitos in your then they got rid of that and now it's just a regular shido. Yeah. yeah so they just want to get rid of it because it's stall it's an ugly technique because not a lot of people do it properly make it look nice and that people are just getting lazy about it just like oh i'm losing a match i'm just gonna shoot a double in the guy or shoot an ankle pick on the guy and it sucks is one of my favorite ones would do would be to do a kochigari grab the leg and come in for oshigari after that which I do like an Osotogari instead because it's more, yeah. more powerful. And just, boom, plant the person down for Ippon. Anthony doesn't like it because he, he got knocked out that way. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the, the stories I've heard was basically boiled down to three things. Like you said, some people said that, that was when they actually removed wrestling from the Olympics. And then people raised a fuss about it and they brought it back. Mm-hmm. And... I think judo got kind of nervous saying like, Oh, we look too close to wrestling. So let's differentiate ourselves. That was one story I heard. And then the second story I've heard was what you said. Um, it's too much stalling. Like people were like one Yuko ahead, one was ahead. Let me just spam leg grab. So we get to the floor. It's kind of like pulling guard, right? You pull guard to stall and you get mm-hmm. stood up and you stall. And there's still stalling tactics to do now, but, just different kinds. So I thought it was a stupid reason, but uh, to ban lake apps over <laughs> it. Um, but stalling was another reason. And then the last reason, which is not true, but it's commonly spread around, is that hmm. the wrestlers were dominating. The wrestlers from Eastern European countries and Russia were dominating yeah, the yeah, tournaments, which one. were yeah, not, yeah. which was not the case, by the way. Um, <laughs> yeah. So they said the, the <laughs> IGF <laughs> decided to ban the light grabs to nerf the the wrestlers. But if you go back and look at the statistics, <laughs> that was not the case. That's totally not the case. Like, yeah, the, I think I think that story came about because Japan had um, had a period where they weren't winning medals for one Olympic cycle, and. Mm-hmm. That's how. That's personally how I think the the story came about. It's like, oh look, they weren't winning medals, so they got rid of the light grabs, and now they're winning medals. <laughs> they got to nerf everybody. They got to <laughs> yeah. take away our techniques. But if it was that was true, here's the thing: if that was a true rumor, if that was really happening, then wouldn't any country with great wrestlers win? They wouldn't be just sending like, oh, instead of sending yeah. judo players, just send wrestlers. Put a wrestler in a judo yeah. gi and send a wrestler out there to shoot doubles on everybody. And I talk about Murotogari looking like a double leg, and it's I say it because they're similar but a wrestling double leg and a judo double leg are very different. They're very okay, different. Like a traditional, yeah, yeah. Yeah. A traditional judo double leg. It's like you're throwing a guy in here like a pizza. All right. Like you go in there and you well, toss him up uh, in the air. That's what it looks like. Uh, yeah. Morotagari literally means two hand. Morot, moro is two. Te is hand. Gari is reap. So you're literally grabbing the back of the knees and then pulling them down. Right. But the wrestling mm-hmm. double leg, you're literally launching them in the air. So... Yeah, I think they're very separate it's a big, techniques. It's a big sit up. 
Yeah, so yeah. we sit up and take over and stuff for a wrestling technique. Either way, you do it. But yeah, it, we say they're the same thing. But I know hardcore judo guys are like, no, they're not. They're different. Like, yes, I know they're different. But for most people to understand what they are, they're mm -hmm. very similar techniques. All right. Just like a shoulder throw is very similar to Ippon Sonagi. But if you get the base, but if you actually talk about it, they're very different when you actually do mm -hmm. them. So that's the history of like why leg grabs are taken out of judo. They just wanted to yep. make judo more dynamic and focus on the big throws instead of just some leg grabbing techniques. What is your favorite leg grab technique? Uh, I'm an old school wrestler guy. So if I have to, I just double leg a guy. No, it's, mm -hmm. it's my three favorite. Okay. I love doing Monotogari to people. Okay. Okay. I love doing Katagurumo to people. And then I love the, the Kochigari leg grab into Ochigari. How about so your for favorite me, leg technique? Takeruma is my number one. Okay. So take, so yeah. I, this is what I was going to mention before was that I found out one day that Takeruma was actually not in the Kodokan list of techniques. And then after some hmm. research, I found out it's actually classified as the variation of Sukui Nage, which is scooping leg throw. And mm -hmm. if you, I'm not going to go too, too deep into it, but if you look into the mechanics of it, <laughs> actually, it makes a lot of sense. So, um, but take room is my favorite. It's beautiful watching how people get lifted up and thrown around. And I've seen some knockouts happen in MMA from it when people refuse to bail mm -hmm. and they get their just dropped in their, their face. Um, yeah. My second favorite would have to be Kataguruma. Like, Kataguruma, how can you mm -hmm. not like Kataguruma, right? If, if you don't like <laughs> Kataguruma, something's wrong with you. Um, and then ankle pick. The ankle pick's my favorite. Mm -hmm. So not, not single leg, but the actual ankle pick. So, yeah, and it was fun, actually uh, funny because I was teaching issue. a guy. Yeah, yeah, it was funny because I was actually teaching a guy this past weekend ankle like a judo ankle pick, so you can use it in BJJ. Mm -hmm. And I was telling him like, he was asking like, so how do you get this leg up? Like, is people gonna have their weight on this leg? I said, mm -hmm. not really, because if I have your gi and I pull you down and I push you back up, what you're what are you gonna do? You're gonna step back to get your balance on that far leg. And that's when you pick the ankle right there because now there's less weight on it. Yep. That's when you pick it up and you can do anything from there. You can just do a leg lift. You can do a little leg sweep. You can come in for Ochigati mm -hmm. on the guy. How do you like it? So a lot, lot of people confuse an ankle pick with a single leg. So a single leg in, in judo is uh, Kuchiki Taoshi, like a tree stump fall, uh, like drop. Like you're basically pushing over a tree stump. And then mm -hmm. an ankle pick is Kibisu Gaishi, which is one hand reversal. So the difference is ankle pick, you're pulling, like you said, you're pulling backwards, right? Um, yeah. Kuchiki Taoshi, you're, once you have the leg, you're driving forward with your body weight to try and knock them over. So that's the, yeah, it is, the ma major difference. It's the, yeah, it's the judo style. It's the sweeping. It's the, what they call in like BJJ and mm -hmm. call it the, re the reaping, the sweeping, because I'm pulling that away from the person as I'm pushing forward, as I'm down. Same mm -hmm. thing if I'm doing Murotogari. I'm pulling both legs back and I'm pushing forward with my shoulders to get them down. I'm sweeping those legs out from the person. So, so those are the band techniques in judo. You have anything to add, Anthony? Well, we can also, no? we can go forever. We can go forever about this. Like <laughs> oh, why, why we can't attack we really? the spine. Like, the <laughs> cause Andy's a bad person. He wants to attack the spine. That's why. <laughs> So I think uh, another controversial topic that never really gets a full answer about is uh, shoulder locks. Mm. Shoulder locks okay. are not allowed in judo. And then people are like, why is uh, Kimura, like the figure four, the figure four um, lock, uh, why is that legal then? Like that's technically a shoulder mm -hmm. lock. But I think either the Kodakana IGF came out and said that you're applying pressure to the elbow and not directly to the shoulder or something of, yes. of that sort. So exactly. even though it's, it's uh, you just going to damage your shoulder, but <laughs> uh, it's because technically a proper judo Udekatame is supposed Udegarami, to only attack yeah. the elbow. Udegarami yep. is only supposed to attack the elbow. It is not supposed to attack the shoulder, but it is a very thin line from the shoulder to the elbow of which ones you're attacking. And the big one that made it, um, I can't remember who it was, but the big thing that changed it was a few years ago, one of the Korean judo players was in it was in a Kimura and she didn't tap quick enough or something happened and she messed up her shoulder and she was out for like a year. And they're like, you want to know what? 
This is a normal technique that people are going to do. There's lots of stuff like this happen, but this is normal thing people do. And we don't want people to be out for a year or two years because of an injury in what's supposed to be a safe sport. Mm -hmm. So that's when they said, okay, we need to make sure that you're only attacking the elbow, which is very hard to like, how am I going to, it's yeah. such a thin line. How do you prove it? How do I watch the match? Even as a trained judo player, the trained grappler and be like, all right, that's too high. That's on the shoulder. Maybe yeah. Bring it down a little bit. It's, it's one of those hard things. So you go for a Kimura, Americana, key lock, just, just go for it. But try I, and not I wish that the shoulder. On, on one hand, I'd wish to come out and say, like, you can or you can't do this based off of these criteria. But on another mm -hmm. hand, looking at what they did in the past to clarify stuff, like, look at what they did with bow and arrow, right? Um, the bow and arrow choke. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, now you can't now you can't hook onto the leg because when you do the bow and arrow because so it counts as a knee that. bar. So I'm just like, okay, maybe I shouldn't ask for them to clarify because then <laughs> now they'll be like... <laughs> well, it's like the... The Jewish girl, like how many, like was it eight years ago, the Jewish woman that used her gi to choke the to choke choke. Her opponent yeah. out. Kirby choke. Yeah. And they're all like, oh, she's going to pop her head off with that. Oh, she's going to pop her neck. And I was like, no, she's not. She's not. It's just a normal choke. It's just yeah. a regular cross arm choke. It's just she's using the gi. She's using the material that we're allowed to use. It's like, I saw nothing wrong with it. But the old well, school now, guys are like, now oh. Now they just ban all the gi chokes. Yeah. It, that's stupid. That one's dumb. But it's like their excuse was like, oh, she's going to pop her neck off. She's going to pop her head off. I was like, really? Really? You think so? You think that's going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really? You think that's going to happen? It's going to right, pop off. They're going to be rolling on the yeah. mat. Oh, horror show. <laughs> and now people just do the Peruvian necktie. That's a, I've seen it, seen it a lot in the IJF circuit. So that's a pretty cool technique. Maybe we should teach that when we mm -hmm. uh, open the dojo again. We could. I can also teach uh, some more of the Kashiwazaki techniques. Greatest name was a player of all yeah. time, in my opinion. Yep. All right. So, Anthony, you have anything else to add? No, I think that's a good no. anniversary episode. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we went over a lot of the illegal techniques, why they're illegal, why they're not taught anymore, why they're not done anymore. If you guys have any more questions or have your own opinions on it, please send it to us at tatamitalk mm -hmm. at gmail.com. You can follow us on Instagram and YouTube at the Tommy talk. You can follow me at the Jerry underscore Juan. You can follow Anthony at Anthony throws both on Instagram. That it. Well, yeah, I think uh, I'd like more people to get, give us more feedback. We haven't really gotten that many <laughs> emails or comments this year, but uh, it, it's just like in software engineering, people will say, if you say something right, nobody will, or you've asked a question, nobody will ever answer you. But if you say something wrong and pretend you are right, hundreds of people will come jumping out, like rushing to correct you. <laughs> so maybe, <laughs> maybe we should start starting some uh, something wrong and say some lies. Have people come be like, I don't know. I get a lot of BJ, I get a lot of BJJ yeah. people. <laughs> I get a lot of BJJ people talk. coming after about, about that. About. You know? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> that's just human nature. Oh, and here's one yeah. thing. So here's one thing that I actually, I for, always forget to promote on my own stuff is that I know people are asking about no gi judo throws. We've had a question like that before. Mm -hmm. And at my friend's page at Catch Us and Lions on their YouTube channel, I did a segment on there of how to do some no gi judo throws from, from a wizard, from a wizard style. And mm -hmm. also on their page service on the YouTube, they also, I went through um, four judo throws, four different ways without a gi. I went through Uchimata, uh, Taitoshi, Harai, Raigoshi and uh, Ogoshi and did all those four different ways, four different t styles of doing it without a gi. So if you guys really want to learn some no gi judo throws, look up on there how to do them. And me and Anthony actually think about doing some short, some short form videos as well. So we might go over those mm -hmm. there as well later. But I'm not going to go into Thanks. detail. If you want to go into detail, you got to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks for listening, guys. See you in a couple weeks. <laughs> all right. See you next year. Peace. Yeah. <laughs>